Hi, I'm Sean, one of the news editors at Manx Radio. Now, the British Medical Association has announced it will ballot its members on the Isle of Man if a 12.6% pay rise for the 2023 to 24 financial year can't be agreed with Manx Care. So just why hasn't this pay award been agreed already? And what will the impact be if there is industrial action by doctors? Myself and Ben spoke to Manx Care's chief executive, Theresa Cope. It, well, it hasn't been resolved because I just don't think we are even close to being able to resolve that very significant gap between what Manx Care has been able to offer within its budget and obviously the expectations of the of the British Medical Association. And I think this follows um, the sort of the settlements that have now been achieved in the UK and the resolution in other jurisdictions. So, you know, I do recognise that we have fallen behind, but obviously Manx Care offered 6% for 2324 uh, for last year, and the BMA are seeking 126 And there's a a significant gap there. So sort of to bridge that gap, we would need to find around a further three and a half to four million pounds in order to achieve that settlement at at 12.6. Obviously, we we start the following year's pay negotiations and um, we've offered 4% for 24-25, the current year. But yes, I mean, I think it's a, a great source of Um, stress uh, for for everybody concerned that we haven't been able to settle this this pay dispute. You touched on there the fact that um, Manx pay awards have fallen behind the UK. Why is that? Well, we're we're given um, a level of budget um, and and we we sort of transfer that across into all of our pay awards. So uh, for last year, 6% was put into our budget um, on pay awards. Um, and 4% has been factored into this this year. Now, you know, if we was to go over and above that, Manx Care would need to find that from its base budget. So we would need to make changes which would allow more, more than that to be put into base pay. Um, and we haven't been able to find that. So, you know, we have we have escalated this, but I think this is this is the difficulty that, you know, we haven't been able to keep pace. We have watched very closely what's been happening in the UK. We absolutely don't want industrial action and strike action um, on the island here. It would have a huge detrimental impact on patients. Nobody wants that. The BMA don't want that and we don't want that. Um, so it, it is, we do need to try and resolve that. But um, as we've heard, um, that can only be resolved by putting an improved offer on the table, which Manx Care is not able to do. And as I say, that gap, um, what we would need to find is around um, four million pounds. And then there is a broader question um, and a broader question which Manx Care has had to consider throughout all of the pay negotiations Um, We have tried to create equity with all of our workforce. So whatever offer we have made to to our doctors, um, our board feel it's important that we would be able to make a comparable offer to all of our other workforce, you know, our nurses and our allied health professionals, which is why we have sort of held a line around um, that 4% offer for this year and 6%. Now, we did manage to settle at 6% last year for for other other members of staff, but obviously, um, you know, we haven't been able to achieve that resolution for our, for our doctors. Now, the BMA told us that it's concerned about the impact that this could have on recruitment for Manx Care. Is that something that is also a, a concern for you? That if you can't match what's being offered in the UK, staff simply won't come here. I think it is a concern in the in the longer term. I mean, what I would say is we have been able to recruit um, into mo- most of our substantive vacancies for doctors. So, you know, when Manx Care started, there was a high number of agency and local conductors working for, for us. Um, that is absolutely down to a minimum now. And we have been able to make substantive recruitment. Um, so we have very few vacancies for doctors across the organisation, which is a real positive. Um, our base salary for doctors is still higher than than the UK. So we still are able to pay slightly more than than the UK. Um, at the top of that scale, it's it's around 25 to 30k better than the UK. But I do take that point that unless we can remain competitive in that market over a longer period of time, we will and potentially see 
um, see our ability to recruit uh, reduce. Now, with a potential ballot over industrial action, we know industrial action can be a fairly a broad range of actions, but how big an impact could this have on Manx Care services? I mean, any industrial action is going to have a significant impact. I mean, at this moment in time, uh, what we know is obviously the ballot is going to happen um, at the point where we know the outcome of that ballot. And if that ballot is in favour of industrial action, we work very closely with the unions to agree what are called derogations. So the services which which must continue to operate um, and, and we just don't know the detail of that. Um, you know, obviously, as we work through that process and work closely with the BMA, we will understand more about what that industrial action um, is, is likely to look like and then when it's likely to happen. I mean, obviously, we're going into winter, but, you know, any any form of industrial action is is not good. It's very distracting. It's very unsettling. And, you know, I would I would just make the point again. It's not it's not what any any of us would want. Now, Mrs Cope, I think it's fair to say that over the last uh, couple of months or so, it's been very stormy times for Manx Care with uh, various issues, which, of course, have been well reported. So going over to the next couple of months, if there is this industrial action from the doctors, do you think the right team is in place at the top of Manx Care to see the health body through any potential industrial action and indeed the Isle of Man through that as well? Um, yes, I absolutely do. And, you know, I did respond to someone um, on social media last night. So, you know, I, doctors are incredibly important members of the workforce. They are the care prescribers um, and, and nothing will denude that. But we have a broader workforce and we have a workforce which is representative. Um, social workers, allied health professionals, nurses, managers. Um, and we have a board which is made up of all of those in, individuals. So we have three medical doctors on the board. Uh, we have a social worker. We have allied health professionals. We have nurses. Uh, we have professionals who have, have worked their entire careers in, in health and care. Um, so I would argue very, very strongly that we have the right expertise on the board to lead us through this. Now, obviously, you know, last year there were strikes by nurses and and we planned for that uh, we went into command and control mode we absolutely led the organization through that you know we have to do this respectfully you know our our staff have a right to express their views through industrial action working with their staff side and despite all of that difficulty our relationship with the Royal College of Nursing remained very very strong and we've come out of that we've come out the other side and we continue to work really positively with all of the staff side organisations. I hope it will be no different as we go through this process with our medical staff um, and the British Medical Association. Um, our, our primary concern, first and foremost, is to disrupt patient services to the absolute minimum um, and to reassure the public that the services they need will still be here. And that's what we will be focused on doing. Now, of course, we've been talking about the 2023-24 pay award. You've touched on the fact that there is provision in your budget this year for a 24-25 pay award. What can be done between now and this time next year to make sure we don't end up having this conversation again? Uh, Well, indeed. I mean, I think we need to make sure that's factored into our financial plan submissions um, and is very clearly understood by both Department of Health and Social Care and Treasury. Um, This matter has been escalated because ultimately um, there needs to be a a decision made across broader government about what can be afforded. And and we know we're in that position at the moment of having to, to think really, really carefully about what we can afford and what level of provision we need. And whilst the pay awards um, sit slightly separately from that for all staff groups, um, and I would include all staff groups who work on the island, um, we we must make sure that our financial planning um, across the whole island reflects what is likely to be the necessary uplifts on pay in order to achieve resolution. Um, because actually it's in no one's interest to have long and protracted pay negotiations, which cross over several years. Now, you know, I know the BMA feel there has been pay erosion over quite a long period of time. And so they have reached this point where 
actually that needs to be stopped and pay restoration needs to be put in place. Now that is incremental, that may take a few years, but that, that needs to be factored into um, wider financial planning for the island, if that indeed is what, what is supported. And obviously that then transferred into Manx Care, so we can have that budget to be able to achieve a reasonable settlement um, for, for, for our staff. You know, it's not for me to make the judgment about what is a fair settlement. Ultimately, Manx Care has offered, um, if we go back sort of the four years, um, 3% for 21-22, um, a combined total of 8% for 22-23, 6% for 23-24, and 4% for the year we're in, 24-25. It's not for me to make the judgment of whether that's a, a fair settlement. Clearly, the British Medical Association have felt the last two years of offer, the 6% and the 4%, are not what they feel are appropriate for their members. And we have to respect that. Um, and that's the negotiation piece. But but there is a significant financial gap between what we're able to offer and what the expectations are from British Medical Association colleagues. And as I say, for this year alone, um, for the sorry for the 23-24 year, that gap is um, is is about four million pounds. Thank you for making it to the end of the Manx Radio newscast. You are obviously someone with exquisite taste. May I politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear on your smartphone. Thank you. Thank you.